Okay, uh, while we're waiting for <coughs> the Laguna Decidia Final Fantasy of our Omnia Japan Limited Weapon Showcase, and I want to react to that as well as the Ope Ope EX while we're waiting for those footage, we are going to review Marvel's What If, the animated series starring the voices of the MCU. Their first outing is Captain Carter. So, by the title itself, it's what if Peggy Carter became the super soldier in place of Steve Rogers. So, the premise of Marvel What If is there's the narrator called the Watcher who just watches things, just like in the comics, and they see everything, including the multiverse that was been expanded upon on Loki. Now, for Captain Carter, it starts off in the scene on First Avenger where Steve is going to get the treatment, but the decision point here is instead of Agent Carter leaving the premises, she decided to stay, and because of that, she saw the spy going to do a demolition job. Well, unfortunately, Erskine still dies, so that... Kinda affects the gravity of the situation. I was hoping Erskine would live during Captain Carter, but yeah. So because of that, because of that, the divergent because of the divergence that happened, Steve got shot by the spy. I think he was paralyzed, so he is unable to be physically fit enough. To intake the super soldier serum inside that body chamber. So in place, the commander would have Howard Stark. But Agent Carter steps in. She stripped down to her what a tank top. Women in 1940s wear tank tops as their underwear, not a bra. Or maybe because this is Disney. We're not allowed to strip anymore to their bras and panties. So because of that, Peggy, Peggy became a masculine. She got buff. She looks like a She-Hulk-esque super soldier. And yeah, she rolls with it as the new super soldier. So we didn't get the same treatment that Steve Rogers got when he became Captain America. Remember, when Captain America became a super soldier, he was denied of the position to charge a troop. He became a ma mascot promoting war bands. And he sang that song. Captain America. The Star Spangled Man with a plan. Yeah, that song. So, either Peggy has a good grip on the Allied forces that she didn't become a mascot. Because it is clearly hinted during the episode that she is being considered as a mascot. But because she has a higher position in the army than Steve, she has, the, she has creative control or rather power to not be the mascot or the devs don't seem that Union Jack woman with a plan is a complicated song and they may cross even more feminist borders which where feminism isn't that big in the 40s Now, Steve was so desperate in this episode that after Peggy retrieved the Tesseract from Arnim Zola, he accepted to become the Hydra Stomper or that era's Iron Man. So the Iron Man suit 
named the Hydra Stomper, is powered by the Tesseract, and Steve rides it. I got a few grips on that. I don't think it is in Steve's character that he is able, that he is willing to wear a suit of armor. Remember in Avengers, he actually criticized Tony for being a big guy in a suit of armor. Because Steve relies on confidence more on himself in his inner power than relying to an outside means. So that alone, Steve wearing an Iron Man suit... Or the Hydra Stomper kinda is an out of character thing for Steve Rogers, but we have to consider that he's kinda paralyzed because he got shot by the spy that killed Abraham Erskine in the beginning of this episode. Well, in the end, there was the guys managed to rescue Bucky and the Howling Commandos. They got the train scene right where Bucky lived. I mean, Bucky did not become, did not fell to his imminent assumed death. He just got saved by Agent Carter over here. And yeah, there's no Winter Soldier in this timeline. But Steve got a fake out death. So there were bombs placed on the train. Steve managed to warn everyone, the Howling Commandos and Agent Carter, to get out. So everyone escaped except for himself. He shielded everyone from that. And that's a fake out death. We were assumed, the viewers were assumed that Steve died during the operation. But in the end, they went to the house, into the castle where Red Skull is treating as a headquarters for Hydra operations. And Steve Rogers was alive. So they were a Red Skull was able to retrieve the Tesseract because it was the way that they want Steve to stay on the train. Cue the explosion in order to retrieve the Tesseract. The Tesseract is transporting a Shuma Gorat to the mix and Captain Carter. Yeah, that's what Agent Carter is called here, Captain Carter. I don't know why not Captain Britain. Captain Britain is an established name in the Marvel comics. So why not Captain Britain? Why Captain Carter is beyond me, but maybe it is possible that the actual Captain Britain, the one who is powered by Merlin, is going to be in the MCU for a little bit later. So, Steve managed to power up. The Hydra Stomper via the generator in the holding cell that he is in saved everyone but got shot down or tackled by Shuma Gorat. And then Agent Carter just pushed Shuma Gorat back to the portal with her shield and then got shot up. The ending scene here is Agent Carter got teleported to the modern time. And this is where we assume that Agent Carter is going to be a benefactor to the future multiversal war that will happen against Kang the Conqueror. What are my take on this is, I believe Peggy Carter is staying in the MCU, but Steve is not. Let me check. Let me check who voiced Steve Rogers in Marvel What If. No, it wasn't voiced by Steve Rogers, so he didn't return. It was Josh Keaton, who did a good job replicating Steve's voice. Yeah. So, after that, we will head to episode 2. I don't know what episode 2 is. What would be episode 2? So episode 2 is the Black Panther or Star-Lord episode, I think. It's either that, I'm seeing a Doctor Strange thumbnail as well. So either of the two. Okay, so my take here. 
I was expecting kind of more, to be honest. It's just the first Avenger, but if Bucky didn't fail, and Agent Carter is the super soldier. That's it. That's what the story is about. And the thing is about What If Comics is they often do a big risk. There was a Marvel What If storyline in the comics that is titled What If the Avengers Had Never Formed and it eventually led to, the, to an early death of Tony Stark. So I assume that Marvel What If, the TV series, the Disney Plus series, should do a big, big, big curve, big swerve on their storylines regarding that this is a multiversal episode and this is a what if storyline but if they want to to just minorly change something in the story but the story is it is as it is the super soldier beats red skull and hydra there's no big risk they tried to risk it with the death of steve rogers but it happened as a fake out. So the only divergence here is Captain Carter is the super soldier and Bucky live. Another thing is they made Captain Carter OP. She pushed Shuma Gorat out from this earth into that portal with only herself and that shield. So yeah. I'm giving this episode maybe 5 or a 6 unless they take a huge risk moving forward in the future episodes like Dr. Spider-Man and Black Panther Star-Lord and uh, Zombie Captain America or Zombie Iron Man. I don't which one of them was a zombie? I I think it was Zombie Captain America. I'm not seeing any huge divergence they're just going to do the same storyline that previous movies have done with only a little twist so that's my review on marvel what if episode one what if peggy carter become takes the super soldier serum she's gonna be so pissed when her niece is when she finds out her Niece becomes the power broker. I'm actually into Captain Carter versus the Power Broker program, but that is an episode for another day. Thank you for watching and goodbye.